Okay, welcome back. So today we're going to be looking at some analytic geometry questions and we're going to be specifically solving this example by determining what kind of conic section is described by the following equation shown here. So we're given this equation in general form and we want to determine is it a circle, an ellipse, a parabola, or a hyperbola. So these are our four options and we can specifically refer to the new FE handbook. So I'm looking at the FE handbook 10.0 and let me go down to the mathematics section. You can do control F, type in conic and we're specifically looking at conic sections, right? So here we have the general figure you usually see and we know a par parabola is going to be described by an eccentricity value of cosine of theta divided by the cosine of phi. So when we have a value of 1, let's say we have cosine of 45, let's assume our theta angle is 45 degrees and our phi angle is 45 degrees, we're going to have an eccentricity value of 1 and that gives us a parabola. So that's when we're looking at eccentricity. Then for an ellipse, we have the eccentricity is less than 1. You just have to calculate the eccentricity as shown here. And we have a hyperbola. It's greater than 1. And the handbook also gives us the equations for each case. A parabola, ellipse, hyperbola. And a circle, the eccentricity value is just 0. And we're also given the equation for a circle and all these equations. But here for this question, we're going to be looking at specifically using this general form. So we know each, the ellipse, hyperbola, circle, and the last one is the parabola, is defined by the coefficients. The coefficients being A, B, C, D, E, F. So what we're going to do is apply these rules and the first rule you should always apply is determining whether it's a circle. So if we have A equals to C and B equals to 0, we're going to have a circle. And if we do not have a circle, we'll use the this these rules. The, this is called the discriminant and we're going to apply that as well. But you should always check this first to see if we have a circle. So let's do that if we go back to our question. So we know for a circle in the FE handbook it says specifically A equals to C and B must equal to 0. So we know this is going to be our A, this is going to be our B. So be careful here, that's right, X squared is going to be attached to A, XY is going to be attached to the coefficient B, it's going to be our C, this is our D, this is our E value, and this is our F. So we're looking at these coefficients. A we know is 5, C we know is 3. So A does not equal to C, and B we know equals to 8. It does not equal to zero. So we know this is not a circle. So we can eliminate that. Then to test for the rest, we're going to use the discriminant. And that is determined by this equation. So we're just going to determine this value. And if it's less than zero, it's an ellipse. If it's greater than zero, it's a hyperbola. And if it's equal to zero, it's a parabola. So we'll do just that. So we have b squared minus 4ac equals. So b we know is going to be 8, right? So 8 squared minus our a value is 5. We're getting 5. And our c value is 3. And for that. You should get around 4 and we know 4 is greater than 0 if we go back to the handbook which case is that it's this so it's bigger than 0 so we have a hyperbola and that's also our answer should be D
So what we just did was cover an analytic geometry question and we specifically solved a conic section example. So what I want to provide for you all is an Excel sheet that shows all of the topics that you should be studying for the new civil 2020 FE exam. So if I look at this Excel sheet here, you should be able to download this for free on my website. I believe all you have to do is go on there and click the link and it should allow you to download it. So what's happening here is we have two tabs at the bottom. We have the 2020 civil FE topics or sections. So we have math and statistics, ethics, engineering, econ, st statics, dynamics, and so on. So we end at construction engineering. So we also have the topics that you should be studying. So for the math, we have these four topics. For the new 2020 specifications, they added statistics. They combine the math and the statistics. And we also have an approximation of the number of questions. So this is not exact, but I like to do this for my students to give them a idea of wh where to spend most of their time, what to study, and where to focus when they are specifically crunched on time and they need like a idea of what section is going to be the most important. So for the math, there's going to be approximately eight questions and this is eight out of a hundred. For the ethics, it's approximately four. Statics, there's going to be eight. And if we go down here, we realize water, structural, geotechnical has the most. Water has 10. Structure has 10, geotechnical has 10, transportation has 9, construction has 8. And all of these add up to 100%. So that's what's done here. And there's also a pie chart of each section. And we can see how structural has 10. It's the one in pink. We have water resources and environmental engineering. Math has 8. And this is just a figure of the pie chart for each section. So that's this and the second tab you'll have like a checkoff list. This might be useful to some, it might not be. So I like using it as I help students and it will get updated in the future as I work on it more. It's going to be some other project but stay tuned for that. And for this you will have the section, then the topics. All you have to do is check this off when you cover it. So here what I recommend you do, so what we just did for this question was cover an analytic geometry. We didn't cover everything for analytic geometry, right? So what I recommend you do for analytic geometry, we specifically cover conic sections and you just write a comma. Next you might cover the in the handbook. So this is in reference to the new handbook. You might cover a different area of analytic geometry. So that's important and you might need to do more conic sections examples, right? And you can do the same for calculus, vector operations, and for statistics. So you just write the topics that you studied and thoroughly covered. Then after you do that, you just check this off and proceed downwards by looking at each section. So for statics, you can cover resultant force systems, check it off, and proceed but make sure to cover it thoroughly and study as much as possible and do as many examples as you can. Here this might be useful to some of you, the study time that you put in in days, the topics to review or go over, and notes to yourself after you've studied each topic. And this is also again, it can be downloaded on the website and by specifically we can go here. So I'll type in let me fix this. It's going to be directhub.net. And you go to exam prep services. You have one on one. And you can read all of this if you choose to. If you're interested in one on one sessions. But here's where you can preview practice questions. I think these are free as well. They're just random math questions, I believe. And I use the real ones with my students. And this is what you're mostly interested in here. 
all you have to do is click download and it should download to your downloads or wherever you want to store it and that's all and i hope this helps and let me know if you have questions don't forget to subscribe and like thank you